So this has been a kind of like a surprising week for me and really for all of us and I've been sort of watching to see how the week would unfold because as now who hasn't been able to attend a zoom or talk with Michelle and I and yeah. hear the story firsthand of kind of what this week came about so you've heard yeah. maybe bits and pieces there's there's missing people who haven't yeah I'll take them to lunch all right Nicole yeah. is offering lunch for the full in-depth story because for those of you that heard it, you know, it goes for like an hour. It's a so. really long story. It yeah. is. I, I can summarize, though. Do you, I think you I can. You could probably convince. I don't uh, know. If yeah, actually, I, I can, can you condense better than me? I don't oh, know if you can. We'll try. We'll see. We'll see. He's long-winded, guys. We know that. I can do this. Okay. For the last five, six years, this intense time where God has been challenging us to think about what church is, I've also been thinking about where church is. Part of the same conversation. And so at various times I've looked at various buildings, at various plots of land, like what would it look like? During that time, she visited the Houks in Minnesota, former members of our church, and their church was in a community center where the members of town would come and that one would be going to the pool or to uh, an office space that was rented out. The church was also there. So you let out a church and you're talking with town folk because you're just in the same place. So there's something about that intrigued her and she kept in the back of her mind like community center, not like a gym that you put chairs up in, but like a multi-purpose kind of space. Within that context and my looking, it's always felt like I'm doing the job of it. Like I'm looking up a listing and calling rooms. It's like my work, if that makes sense. I'm doing like homework, I'm thinking, but it's never felt like a God sort of thing. And even with the property that has been offered to our church this past week, um, it's a property I looked into a couple of months back and got the owner on the phone and he said, no, I would not like to sell to churches. So it was just a closed door. So it was like, whenever I've thought about these things, God, what would you do? It's felt like me doing it. And then you get to a point like, okay, well, I've sort of looked and thought and explored. I know what properties are available and there just aren't any right now and that's fine. And then through Michelle, through selling a bed on Craigslist, even before Facebook Marketplace, uh, five years ago. No, it was, it was two This was two years ago, two years ago, right before the pandemic. Met a nice family who bought a bed from our little kids to go to their little kids. Michelle and the wife start talking and texting, become good friends. She's a Christian. Her sister owns a shop that ends up becoming down in Taunton uh, and is very embedded in the community. And here's, as we're getting to meet this couple with the bed for the kids, the Dunnigans, that... Um, they, uh, that, you know, what would God do? Would we, would we always be here? And honestly, this last year, there's been times where we didn't know if we'd be able to afford to stay here. So some of my looking has been like, well, what if we can't afford to stay here? What are other options? And some of it has been like expansion. What if we do something bigger? So like, do we need to go smaller? Do we need to go bigger? Will we just stay here and God will bless? So through those two relationships and then someone who lives in downtown Taunton, she says, well, I've got a friend, Jose, who owns lots of properties downtown, and that's who I talk to. She's like, let me talk to Jose. Maybe he would meet. We end up meeting, and in the one conversation for half an hour in this property, he gives us a tour of it, which we already kind of got a chance to look at. And I was like, this is a pretty cool little location. Not so little, actually, but a pretty cool location. Um, he went from thinking... Uh, I don't want a church. He, he's not wanting something that looks like this in his downtown, where a church would just come and use a space for themselves, but he wants downtown to be built up. He wants lots of businesses. He wants people. And so community center, we're thinking, well, what if it had lots of things? What if there was after-school tutoring in this space? What if there was a coffee shop that people could come in and out of? What if there were things that we offered to the community and also others that rented? And what if there were little maker spaces? And of course, we want Sundays. We want worship. So it's got to be able to do this because this is our core. And from there, we minister outwards. Like, okay. It could do that. He started hearing those thoughts and from the beginning of the conversation to the end went from like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, to like, oh, right, right. And he, he, he's, he moves when he talks. Some of us do. We've got some Italians and some others here, but they know how to use their hands when they talk. I respect that. Jose does as well. Uh, and so he's like, oh, I've got a friend who does after school tutoring and she couldn't find a place. Oh, and like he started getting excited and he's very connected in that area. So knows all the people, which we don't know anything about it. So he made us an offer on the spot, which we're not expecting. We we're expecting a no on the spot because it had been a no already. So that brings us to this week. The offer was roughly, but maybe not quite, what we might be able to get by selling this building. It's more as we talk about it and there's things that would need to be figured out, but if you think this building, plus then a little bit more of our investment, would equal that building, it's like, oh, well, it's not like an $8 million building. It's somewhere around, like, is it possible? Would it be probable? Is this something that God's been leading us to? And so we just didn't know. 
literally we're not committed, still are not committed to this. Do not think that this is a sales pitch kind of week. It's not. It's a presenting of something that came to us that we weren't expecting. So we just want to think about it. And that's what we've done all week. And so I apologize. I know there are some and probably some at home we've not gotten a chance to talk to. But um, we've been having as many Zoom conversations and phone calls as we can to say, well, what would you think about this idea? So that's what's been presented to our church. It's at 49 Main Street. I don't want to go through slides quite yet because I want to make sure that you want to have a chance to like really lay the groundwork. But I've given you the kind of like logistical side of it, but there's this whole other element of all these unique connections and wonderful little answers to prayer that have brought it about that make it feel like it isn't just Jose and, and this woman Becky who owns a business. There's actually like a larger thing going on. This might be something that we're a small piece of, but is much bigger than us. And so I've wanted to hear what we as a church would think about it this week to know, should we pursue it? Should we not? We can continue to minister here. That's a different location, so it has different opportunities. Does it like catch our imagination? Like, what can we do with that space? Does it make us afraid because we don't know if we have the money or the time or the energy to invest? Those are all legitimate things. So we're not looking for just like agreement. We're looking to process and our whole week has been thinking. But as we've had more and more of these conversations with each of you, we've seen that excitement in your minds and in our conversations for what might be. So I think at the very least, and I'll say this, am I being concise? I don't know. Um, there are like two tracks of discernment that are happening simultaneously. I don't know if you've kind of thought of it this way, but this is how God's been putting it in my mind. One track, one rail of this is, should we at any time think about doing a kind of community center sort of thing? Because this has been presented, we've had to sort of like think about it. Would we like that? And I think that's been really positively received. So I think let's think about whether it's this or not, that being a potential for our church growth in the future. The second track, which goes right in hand, is, is this property for us? Is God opening doors? Will he provide finances? Is it what we need? Is it what he's provided for us? So like we're looking for thoughts along both lines, the concept, your heart, the lost. Um, we're happy to share more of the details, but that's probably better left for a more in-depth conversation. But um, that's what we want to hear. And we'll show some pictures so that some who weren't able to do the walkthrough yesterday can hear. We'll tell little bits of the story as we go. But ultimately, like we've done the week talking to you. We're hoping to hear your stories as we go. And definitely when we get through the pictures at the end, just what is the feeling that you have? What does the Holy Spirit seem to be saying in any way? So can you fill in well, where I have I it? just wanted to add that uh, on Monday morning, before Dave and I actually ever met Jose, we were sitting and some mornings we have the chance to sit together and have coffee, sometimes read scripture or listen to a song or pray together. Um, always at least coffee. Um, but we don't even actually get to have coffee every morning. But we were, when we were sitting there, we were discussing this Sunday, but without any of the other context really. And just felt like we have to circle back on our conversation just about location. Like we've had that conversation before. Some of you might have missed it. It is online. Um, and just one of the times that Dave and I have just spoken to you all together where we talked about location. You know, I drew churches with arrows in and churches with arrows out and we right. sort of diagrammed. But I felt like God really wanted us to talk a little bit more about like what, how does our church feel about that? Like we've talked about location for years and years saying where we are the church, the church is its people, right? Um, and where we are impacts how we can minister and who can come in. And so I look at our church already as a community center. I, I think that it does function that way because I've had the context of that idea for a long time. Our church houses other churches. Our church had a food pantry at one point. Not as great for the public to get to, but for those within the context of our church. Um, it has a clothing closet for foster care kids. Um, not as easy to get to, and it's all sort of crammed into a room. And we we love the homeless. We minister to the homeless. We can't do it here in Easton, in this neighborhood, but it's a passion of some of the people within this body. So this idea of location being a draw for the public, which we've talked about, like who can come in? Like if, if people from everywhere just naturally come to this place, like look at that, they're gonna meet Jesus in us being there. And that's a beautiful thing to me because it's harder. There's not as many people coming in here that aren't already Christian, right? So like what, so it just like brings certain things, makes me come alive in a certain kind of way, just thinking, 
that we could be naturally interacting with the public because of our location as a church. Right. Um, we don't want to give up being a church that no. meets together regularly and gathers in a space to worship and whatever, but what if we had more space? What if we could do more and impact others more? It would help our church grow. It would help us grow. It would expand everything that we already have a heart for, that we're already doing, and all the ways we're already serving so amazingly now, this day, mm. that it just makes me excited yeah. because, and especially, Sally, that week when you said the word more, do you remember? You were that God just gave here. you that word, and right. that was a word in my notebook from years ago. It was just my prayer for all of you, that you would just mm -hmm. experience more of your gifts coming alive and having a place to do it. It's going to make me cry. So I just want that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I say something? I feel like in a lot of ways we have that. Hmm. You know, you said, I want that, but we hmm. have it. Hmm. Uh, we need to embrace that. And I see, you know, <clears throat> you, you have that um, thing that you made with all the arrows going out. Yeah. So that's yeah. church and then we're going out. Yeah. Which is something else I see is happening. We are doing yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And we are I serving the homeless. Right? Yeah. Not, it's like we're being fed here and then we're going out. Right. I see your vision. Hmm. You know, I do see your vision and I understand it. And <clears throat> I just know for me personally, I haven't heard from God yet. I'm seeking hmm. Him. Mm -hmm. I'm praying. Okay. I don't know what my role will be or hmm. if it will be. Um, but I'm just believing that you're hearing from God. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's what this season is all about. It's a season, right? You enter into it in prayer and fasting. Like, okay, God, what are you saying? Is this something from you? Is this just... We even felt like at many points during the week that even if this particular property doesn't come about, that it's been so nice to enter into a place of dreaming together after the last couple of years, which has just been so much like down and sad and loss. And so that's been enjoyable. I've loved those conversations. Uh, I think this place has potential, but other places could as well. So we don't want to run ahead of the Holy Spirit. We want to listen and follow. And so that's what this week has been all about. Like, what do we all think? What are we hearing from God? So um, I want to hear more of like what Sally said, but I know some haven't been there. So can we just really quickly, even just for like one minute, go through some pictures of the property? This is the storefront in downtown Taunton. And it's 4,200 square feet on the first floor. You'll see other things, but this has a lot of people that would walk by. So whereas our church is in uh, a secluded suburban neighborhood, this one would be able to be more invested in the downtown. All right, next slide, probably another picture. You can see that goes towards the back. There is room for it. It could expand up in future years, um, but that's the building as it stands. Two more floors. Two more floors could be added, so future growth couldn't be happening. All right, next slide. This is a picture of it on downtown. So you see the parking lots behind. That's parking available for us, as well as some on this side of the street would be there and some street parking. So there's that to consider. Another view. The police station is right on the corner there. Here. Yeah, near that vehicle. So it's a, a safe place. It's you know, a lot of things that in urban settings sometimes you don't have, like parking or a feeling of a nice area or a safety. This has some of those things. All right, next slide. Again, same thing. Next, probably first floor now. Yeah, so this was a JCPenney at one point and then was converted to a tux shop, Foreman's Tuxedos in downtown Taunton for those that are locals and know that name, was there for 40 years and then was rented out by a church at one point who painted this and put a stage in there and uh, now has been vacant for four years and so has the possibility. This is in the back of the front, uh, like first floor towards the back, there's this kind of open area. Uh, those are just there as storage, but there's a couple of bathrooms. This is upstairs. There's a loft, which is like in the rear third of the building. So we thought, oh, we'd love to have some sort of youth room up there and games and tables. And also this is the back. There's a bathroom up there for that as well. Can you go back one slide, Brendan? You saw over there, that's all insulation because they have a drop ceiling over the whole first floor, but it's just temporary. The actual ceiling is a nice tall tin ceiling. And if that's 
uh, ceiling was taken away, then you, the first floor would really feel just beautiful and open and really be a welcoming space. So keep going. Rear loft, rear loft. What else do we have? Pictures of the rear of the building. This is what it looks like. Um, when I initially looked at it a few months ago and got the, the no, I parked where that Actually, I took this picture on that day. So I had sat there and was praying over this building because I felt like I should. And I've never stopped and prayed behind one of the other buildings I've explored, but I felt like this is a place I need to sit and pray and listen to the Lord. And after sitting and praying and listening there, I felt like I'm supposed to call on it. So I walked around to the front and got the number off the window and called, and that's when Jose said no. But as I was sitting there, I saw the two double doors. I'm like, oh man, you could just open these doors and put out a table and serve food to the homeless right out of our own church instead of having having to drive you know, 20 minutes over into Brockton to do the same thing out of another facility. It would give us that capability because there's a whole big basement under the whole building, which is another 4,000 square feet of basement. And it's just open and dry and secure. It has an updated heating system and so the, yeah, updated electrical, keep going. And since it was a, um, Tuxedo Thank you. Tuxedo Place. There's actually racks for clothing all through the basement, which is so ironically appropriate. We would take all of Michaela's clothes out of buckets and just hang them on the racks that are already there. So I don't, I don't know how to think about it's that. Four thousand square feet of that, almost. Right. It's like one whole half of. How many square feet do you think we have storage in this building? Three and a half square feet, maybe total. I don't know. Like we have four churches here, and they're always asking me, "Can I leave my lectern here? Can we bring it?" I'm like, "No, you have to bring it home and take it back because we can't fit one more thing in this place." Um, so this doesn't have that, and so just see, okay, it's blank slate. A lot of it, maybe all of it, needs to be updated, but capacity potential, those sorts of things caught our eye on Monday, which is why we came to you. We felt like this might be good. We don't know if it is, but it might be. So there's a workshop room downstairs with benches that could be used for serve home type stuff, all sorts of things. All right, let's go on to the next one, the tools. tools. Huh? They call the tools on the tools in our shed, right. They could just go down into the, the workshop there. Um, so the property is like, this is a 4,000 square feet. It's got town sewer. I don't know how many other details you want. The owner is asking for 3,500 a month for a lease of five years. And the reason for the five-year lease is another one of these things that caught our ear. Like, what is that? Like, what? Because he's been uh, granted a grant from Massachusetts for $225,000 for renovation since it sat open. So we're like, if we became the lease sores, ease? Lease folks. If we were lease kind of folks, um, he would use that money to renovate it to what we wanted. It would be like someone giving us $200,000 towards renovations. So like, what do we want? And then the money we get spent on it. He's been very open about that. He doesn't have expectations. He just needs a sprinkler system and then, because that's up to code. And then beyond that, we would get to like have extra money. So for a church that's small, like how do you afford getting into a building? Well, a grant that comes with the building helps it happen. But a stipulation of the grant is that he maintained ownership for five years. And so then he was asking for $475,000 at the end of that for the purchase of the building. So the total thing is kind of like you add up about $200,000 worth of lease payments over five years, and then you need another four seventy-five dollars at that end in a lump sum. Uh, and so that's you know six or seven hundred thousand, and our property is worth a little bit more than that. So there's renovations that we need to do. There's other things. The money, it would be more expensive to be there, but how much exactly and what it would look like. That, those are the detailed questions that I feel like shouldn't be the first questions we ask. It should be listening like, is this something we should even pursue? But I want you to know information. We don't want it, anything to be like found out later. This is what like we've discovered so far. Yeah, Ian. Dave, you said 4,000 square feet a couple of times. How does that compare to the space in this building? We have 2,000 upstairs and 2,000 downstairs. So the first floor is the same capacity as our entire church, but all in one larger space. Yeah. And then Plus there's 4, the loft. There's a loft. So the loft is 30 4, by 60 or something. So that's like a lot more square footage that's not included the in the first loft. floor. There's a, yeah, there's oh. a front loft. Yeah. yeah, go back. I think rear loft might have there's been in there. Loft. There's one like bad, but It's only probably picture. maybe 15 feet. It's very narrow and it goes on the well, front of the building. It's very narrow. It's at least 15 feet. Yeah. But Compared Much narrower than the, the back, back one. Do you see it in there? Rear loft? Did that picture make it through? Rear loft is the big loft that we showed. Oh, yeah, front, front loft. Is there something that says front loft in there? All right, so that's my bad. It didn't come through. Pastor Dave. Which one? Explain this. When you're looking at this railing, yeah. you yeah. see that um, insulation? Yeah. That's 
when that's gone and they raise the ceiling up, that looks over into the... You yeah. look you down. You can see the banister right. on the other side. Yeah. The lofts would both There's look over in into the middle yes. of the space. Right, right. Yeah. So they were like, look, we'll just throw this insulation here. <laughs> That's a good it's idea. It's beautiful, yes. Yeah, but there's a staircase that you can see where it's sort of brown and tan right here. That's the actually back. a wall they put up, so yeah. the staircase could be open also. Looking yeah. down the ceiling, is that a window? Those are, Old I don't know if they used to think? be skylights or what. We do need to check the roof yeah. um, just to make sure that it's not super leaky, but that would be something that we negotiate with like who's, who does what, we who don't maintains own it, what so, right. in the space. You know, we wouldn't own the building yet. So the, and I think maybe we're overlapping now in some of the conversations we already had, but I want to state the things that have stood out to me. And if you go to this last slide, yeah, I want to hear what parts of it speak to you personally. A couple of things that speak to me personally is the response that we've heard this week from disenfranchised Christians. Yeah. That's a whole category of believers that don't go anywhere to church, but have been in traditional church and had a bad experience of some sort. And so they just don't go anywhere. So to go back to another of what they've gone through, like, I'm not really sure if I want to do that. And in our conversations, all of those folks have been like, this is great. We're, just, we're investing in the community. And so it doesn't carry some of the baggage that traditional church does for those particular people. I've liked that. It's kind of like Jesus going after the one with the 99. It's like his people. It's not saving unsaved people in that instance, but it's almost like reclaiming some people for the kingdom and active ministry. It, it would appeal to those um, sort of folks. And then the second thing is that Jose, we keep saying he's kind of like the governor. He knows everybody. Oh, you got to talk to Colleen. She's in charge of the business district. And she knows people who are makers who are looking for like shelf space where they can sell goods. And I know this guy. He knows everyone. And if you remember, we're going to read this in just a moment when we crack open the Bible and just talk about because. We're, we're commissioning this morning. We're commissioning the Raposo family. We're praying over them and Gus as well. This is their last Sunday with us before house and those sorts of things. There's like lots of things all going on at the same time. But we may be in the process of discerning if God's commissioning us out of here. Like, who knows? Six months or a year from now, he might have sent us all out of this building. Some to Missouri, some to wherever, and some to Taunton. We don't know. But we're going to think about what it looks like when God does send us out to do it scripturally and to do it biblically. And just remember and recognize for later, God told them to look for the right people in the towns they went to who would be their hub of operation, who could connect them to the network they're called them people of peace. When you find that person, stay in their home, and they will introduce you to all their friends. They will help the gospel spread. Jose is that kind of a guy. I, can I talk about Jose for a second? Yeah. So that <laughs> because, appeals to me. Yes. Because talk about Jose, Jose was, um, you know, now we've probably met Jose four times or something and spent time with him. Plus, he calls me very regularly. Um, <laughs> sometimes, like, I can't pick up. You have to talk to Jose now. Um, <laughs> But Jose is somebody that um, my friend who owns this printer that is behind this location called Cards and Pockets, Becky, who is, happens to be the sister of a friend that I made very randomly selling a bed. Her sister's name is Bonnie. And I've been friends with Bonnie for two years now. And the only reason any of these pieces fell together was because I ever met Bonnie. And then ever was introduced by Kelly Percival, who used to come to our church, to Cards and Pockets as a printer. And the only reason that I ever met Becky was because I would meet her when I would go pick up my things. But we were never friends. And But Becky has wanted to move to Taunton and move her business, she's a Christian, to Taunton for 10 years. She's looked in Taunton at real estate for 10 years. And when I met her this past weekend on Saturday and she had coffee with me for four hours, she drove me to every place that she's ever looked at in Taunton, just knowing that that's a city we're open to. I mean, we looked in Brockton as well. Um, and so she walked us through this place. I got to meet Jose. We got to meet Jose Monday morning. Jose was very like effusively excited after one meeting, but then when we, like the backstory of Jose comes out, which I learned from Becky, which is that his daughter just got saved. Mm -hmm. She out of nowhere decided she wanted to walk into Grace Church in West Bridgewater, didn't know anyone there, didn't anything, just drove in, was like, I'm gonna go to this church. Mm -hmm. Goes to Grace Church in West Bridgewater, gets saved. Mm -hmm. her, her mom, who is, is the teacher next door in BR to Eli's Spanish teacher, Jose's wife teaches at BR. Um, she's saved. And they're all like reading their Bibles. They're like excited. They're talking about Jesus with him. And he's 
was raised Catholic, but was a little bit kind of like, hmm, that's nice, good for you, like, <laughs> yeah, all right. But he's kind of, and Becky has been coming after him and Praying coming after him. him. She's a heart for Taunton and yeah. just Jesus being in the downtown. She's there. She considered her business its own ministry. She yeah. ministers to her own employees. Half are saved, half are not. So she has this, like, right. love and heart for Jose. And she's kind of like, all right, I'm going to give you FaceTime with Jose. Because I was like, if I meet Jose, Jose, I was going to go from no way Jose to yes way Jose. I feel like if I just can meet Jose. Because, like, who's going to say no to what we're talking about? You might say no. Like, there are already two storefront churches downtown. There's, I think there are a couple Pentecostal storefront ones that are what you imagine when you think of a storefront for a downtown, right? So it's just like, whatever. They're in there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why Jose was probably just like, we're all set. We got the church down here and whatever. And we're kind of like, well, we're the church, but we're also wanting to minister and serve and help this community. So he gets this vision. And when we ha met with him Thursday of this past week, He's like, he's like, oh, I gotta tell you this. He's like, I gotta be honest with you. He always says, I gotta be honest with you. And I'm like, okay, be honest. I love it. Uh, I gotta be honest with you. You know, all, all this stuff that's going on, it's changing me. It's changing me. Yeah. I, I can't explain it. I don't, you know, all these things with my daughter and all this stuff with my wife and, and, and then you guys come in here and you guys and all these things that you're dreaming about and all these things that could be for the community. He's like, I, I, I don't know, something's going on and I don't know. He's like, it's just changing me. He's like, two months ago, if you had talked to me about this space, no, mm -mm. He's like, I, I'm a businessman. I would have been said, no, no. But he's like, I don't know, something's going on. Yeah. And so he, I'm kind of like, Okay, Jose. So I text Becky, and I'm like, guess what Jose said? Mm -hmm. And so we, we end up, walk, after our walkthrough, we, yeah, we end up, this is such a long story. You guys can't even imagine all of, it's like, this is like a spoke, and the amount, or a hub, and the amount of spokes that keep coming into this hub are just like, that's why my brain hurts. Because it like our Missouri it's that. It's that kind it's of a like thing. It's just like so many details. And it doesn't mean that like this is the space at all, but it just means that something is happening. And we have to just like it be It does listening. parallel you guys in that way. Like even to now, you're like, the closing's happening, I'm pretty sure. Right? Like everything is like we're waiting. One day or two, but I won't know until tomorrow. But it's, yeah. it's the belief and the wait, the unsurety, but the signs and the feeling, like the prayer. So like we're, we're just got thrown into this. Like, do you think it like would make sense to say after two years of a pandemic, when our church is like the smallest number that's ever been with more people moving away and finances being tight and all this, like, I'll just, like now let's think about a new building. Like, no, that like gets you fired from churches when you say stuff like that. Like, I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> but I can't not present this because of how it comes with all these strings attached and all these wonderful God moments. Talking to the pastor just a few weeks ago and him saying there were, before the pandemic, three churches that ministered to the homeless. All of them have moved out or shut down. There's nothing happening. Oh, so we could like open our door and just be there and yeah, like well, help where there's like a need. October, right. So like that's good. Right, um, but let me get back yeah, to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I was adding a spoke to your hub. Actually, well, maybe. But no, I'll explain him. So, Jose, now, so this is Thursday, so I'm kind of like, all right, like, God is clearly working in Jose, which, if nothing else, you guys, if Jose just gets to know Jesus yeah, and be yeah. on fire, he's still in that place. He's still the governor, right. as far as I'm concerned, of Taunton. Great. He owns half of the downtown, basically. Mm -hmm. So, like, Jesus is coming for Jose no matter what. Yep. But also... True. When we got to see him again on Saturday after our walkthrough and we talked to him again, I just kind of had to like lay it out for Jose because Jose is like a hustler and he like has a lot of other people interested in this property, right? And so he's letting me know every single one of them. Um, and I'm kind of like, okay, all right, I respect it, you're a businessman. So I had to level with Jose and be like, Jose, this is what I need from you. I need to know if you're just going to be my partner, our partner in talking about this. You have to just be on board and like share the dream and the vision of what could happen in the downtown. You could have someone come in with their, you know, their, someone who wanted to sell like collectibles. I'm like, you could have the guy come in and sell collectibles. All right, he'll, he'll take your space as is. Ugly. He'll take it. Great. You could make more money with him. But is that your dream for the downtown? Is that what you want? So I, he was like, no, no, no. You know what? No, I'm with you. I'm with you. We're partners. We're together. I'm with you. And so, like, I have Jose. We have Jose. Like, with aligned with yeah, the vision and the dream downtown. of something yeah. downtown being for the community by Christian people, for for Jesus. 
Mm. And he's, he's committed to that vision with us right now. So there's a lot of details for mm. sure, but that's a very exciting thing just in terms of him as a person. Mm. That's mm. just Jose. So, uh, Have we spoked enough? Can yeah. Can I just also say that, has anyone ever seen the movie Tangled? <laughs> Raise your hand if you saw Tangled. Okay, remember the scene in the bar? where all of them sing the song, I have a dream, and they, they all sing it because they all have their dreams, right. and they're like hilarious and adorable and amazing. Yeah. I feel like we're like the Christian cool version of Tangled Scene in the bar where we all have a dream. I just, that's what I'm bringing to the table today, you guys. Disney and the bar scene. <laughs> because I want us to dream, no matter what, together of what right. you feel like God could use you to do in a space that's a little different than how he's already using you in this space and yeah. in the community and in people's lives. Yeah. Just the word more, just even more, even more yeah. than he already is. I want you to dream. So we're gonna tangled scene right now. Who's going first? <laughs> Who's singing? You don't have to sing. Yeah. I just want, I feel like I left what I said open-ended and so what I wanna say is I am seeking God, I haven't heard from him, but my default is when I'm seeking God for something and mm. I haven't heard from him is what was the last thing he told me? Mm. And the last thing he told me was to come to New Hope. Mm. I haven't heard otherwise. Mm. But I do that. clearly want to hear. Mm -hmm. So then that, in your process of discernment, it gets like divvied out, is New Hope this place or is New Hope this people? If this people are another place, is that still New Hope? Like that's, that's discernment for you, like what your true calling is. And I, I go through that as well as a pastor. Like what's my calling? Is my calling to a town? Is my calling to a people group? Is my calling to a place? And then you know how you can best serve because you're confident whenever you come to that conclusion. Doubt, don't. You yeah. Know, when in doubt, don't. Yeah. yeah. Especially when it comes to leaving part of the body of Christ mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just so important that you know God is telling you to do that. Mm -hmm. Because if mm -hmm. you're leaving for the wrong motives, you're taking them with you in the next mm -hmm. place you go. Yeah. All right. It'll be dealt with eventually. Yeah, but well, that's why we've been hoping to listen all week long to everything that's been said from you as the people because ultimately it's what God's going to say to us. Can you flip to the last slide? We can just leave it up because I think it's this point that I want to make. Like, we're the church. You, us, we. So where would you want to do ministry out of? Because it doesn't matter if it's here or someplace else. We want to do the same thing. We want to be the hub with this book. So what gives us the best ability to do that? Where would we be most excited to do it? And then... Like, I support you in that decision. My job is to help support you as the arrows. So where do you want to be hubbed out from? <laughs> and then we follow God in that way. He'll use us any place we are. He is already. Did I see a hand over here? Was that you, Steve, or Tracy? Tracy. Patrice. Patrice? Patrice? Oh, sorry, I didn't see you. I know. Go ahead. Um, I know there's going to be uh, a lot of back and forth with people, and it's, hard. it's a heart thing, obviously, right? And a head thing. It's an opportunity. Um, but it's a lot to remind everyone to keep in prayer the cracks that Satan will use, or division, right? Mm. So God could be calling it to New Hope to another a building or not, but he also gets, gets to decide who, who goes, who doesn't. So if someone has a change of heart, they don't feel like it's a move for them, or they don't feel like it's for them, don't be mad at that brother or sister, or whatever, think that they're not, their decision isn't in line with ours. So just be careful, or not be careful, pray over I would, our differences. I would rephrase that a little bit to say, I think there is such a thing as disagreement with unity. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. And so if Satan can get in and cause disunity, well then we won't be effective whether we're here or anyplace else. But you can absolutely discuss it. It's actually something our world is so bad at right now. If you disagree with someone, then you fight them, you hate them, you leave them, and you're like, that's it. That's not what Christ gives us ministry reconciliation, but there absolutely is room for, I don't think that same way. Okay, well, let's figure out what the Holy Spirit is saying. Or I'm feeling called in this way. I'm feeling called in this way. We have families that we're praying are going in different directions. They're going to take the faith that for this season was here and put it in a new spot. That could be some of us. That might be all of us. We don't know. But yeah, I think I'd, I'd highlight in what you said there the importance of unity that we all be together. Even if we're debating things or disagreeing on things, mm -hmm. uh, unity is critical. <laughs> critical. Patrice, what were you going to add in? Um, I just wanted to say I brought my husband with me uh, yeah. yesterday. And he loved you all, by the way. Oh, oh nice. I do have a husband. He's a mystery man. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, when we were going home, 
he said to me, if you ask me what to do with the building, I would give it a thumbs down. Okay. But then he said, but I'm 75 years old. And I remember oh. when I was in my 40s, and ambitious, and mm. you know, had a dream. And mm. you, you know, this is for the older people that may not think that this is, you've got to remember that, mm. you know, this is, I, you know, it, I think it's exciting. Mm. He, he agreed with that, you know, to go, and he said, you believe in God, I, he loved the prayers, he, he just loved the whole thing. Wow. He was surprised he didn't get baptized. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to come back next week, we'll take care of that. <laughs> but, uh, he was uh, well supportive in that way, thinking, we have to think as we're older, that there's a new generation coming up, there's new mm -hmm. things happening, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a real good, you know, mm -hmm. and he said, you guys keep praying about it. Yeah, what you do. words of wisdom. That's what we've been doing. Yeah, that's a cool thought. I appreciate that. Elia? I had um, a couple thoughts just when you were talking about, like, this was a crazy thought. Like, we're smaller than we've ever been. It just brought back to mind when we were trying desperately to get out of our tiny little house. And I was going to live in the backyard if we didn't move. <laughs> 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 and then we found the house that we currently have, and but we couldn't sell our house. Couldn't figure out what to do with it, and right. then we just felt both of us separately, and we looked at each other and we're like, "We're supposed to buy this house, even if we don't know what we're doing with our other house." Mm -hmm. And through God's grace, I think, like, well, there's a lot of things that, like, we almost didn't get the house, but mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but God held it for us. But then we didn't have to pay two mortgages ever, like, because we had that mm -hmm. first year or whatever. And then we were able to sell the house out of loss but we got rid of it. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing, which is when you're talking about the disenfranchised people, like um, I was with a friend this weekend, and she's, she's maybe, I think, haven't quite got to the bottom of it, but she's been hurt, I think, by churches mm -hmm. and by Christians. And yeah. She had just mentioned that she just really didn't like churches that just say you have to do it a certain way you have to like come in here and like do it this way and if you don't then you're just a horrible person mm. and as she was saying that i was just like that's exactly what like we're trying to like not be mm. and like what a like i think she'd be too far away to like be able to come be part of this but there's so many people mm. like her that wouldn't don't want us to want anything to do with church or christians or whatever but if they were able to be part of something bigger and like see that like there are Christians who are willing to do different things, mm. not just like what That's the interesting. Um, that that would just be like a beautiful thing to those people. Mm. And I love that. And also yeah. seeing the hanger wraps. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All I've seen all week has been confirmations. I've seen it from people that are strangers that I've talked to. I've seen it in conversations with Jose. I've seen it in my own Bible reading as I open up. So I, I feel like God's giving me openness and green light to pursue this. I don't have any personal reservations at all, but I don't speak for the whole body. I just speak for myself. But if I'm one person who's saying what I think and what I feel, I feel like this would be a perfect version of this sort of a thing. But I'm also trying to like hold myself back from being too excited or getting like the cart before the horse because I don't speak for it. And I think I think sometimes that's one of those things that church does too. Or like if the pastor's got a vision, then everybody just get on board. We don't play like that here. That's not what we do. Everyone in this room is a follower of Jesus Christ and has the Holy Spirit. So if he's saying something, he'll just say it to us all. You know, if you're like, I don't feel it. And everybody's like, nobody feels this, but the pastor says it. So it must, no, no, no. I will share that I feel freedom to pursue this. I feel excitement about it. But I need to know the other thoughts that are coming, and I want to know what God is saying to everyone so that I don't find myself having done a bad job of discernment five steps down the road and be like, ooh, I pushed really hard for that thing that seemed right at the time, but it wasn't. I'm not looking to do that. I'm looking to find wisdom, and I'm looking for the unity. Disagree all I want. Let's just find the Father's will through this thing. Um, but there's been so many little moments and conversations. Um, I know, 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 I know. But I, I feel like I just want to share, like, as a person, not as a pastor, like, that is what I've seen this week. So that's that. We were so. just reminded by the people at home that we need the microphone if they can hear us, so they can hear us, so. Zoomers need microphones. Zoomers Sorry, need guys. Microphones. Sorry. We're not good at this. This isn't about us. This isn't about us. 
I, no, that's fine. Can we pass you the microphone though? If, yeah, sure. Okay. Or were you going to say something in addition? I was. All right, let's okay. hold the mic here and then you can take it next so we, we can pass it around. So Thank I you. just wanted to share a quick thing that happened yesterday that for me was just, and, and Maddie was with us too, um, that I haven't experienced something like that in a really long time. But we were, when we were at at Main Street um, at the building. In the morning, I had um, texted friends of ours, not like close friends, but just friends that you know you could text and ask them to pray, and they really would stop and pray. Mm. So I just asked them to stop and pray for discernment for our congregation that I couldn't even explain the details, but I just needed them to stop and pray for us because I really felt like with something like this, we need people outside our own church family cool. praying cool. and having discernment. I think it's really important at a time like this, especially you know for those of us that maybe just get excited about things like this. So, mm -hmm. um, so in doing that, a, a strange thing happened after we were kind of wrapping up. Um, we so we found out, and this family is also a family that I have had some really interesting conversations with over the last like three months, just about church in general and. Um, all sorts of fun stuff that I won't bore you with the details to keep this short. But anyway, this family has really like been on my heart. And, and I think that's maybe why I was drawn to ask them to pray yesterday morning. And as it turns out, through just a quick text that Michelle sent, I find out that um, the dad <laughs> of this family was actually over at Cards and Pockets hanging some lights, which is very random. It's not really what he does for a living. He just happens to know Bonnie over at Cards and Pockets. Okay. Becky, sorry, over at Cards and Pockets. Um, and, and so I texted his wife because after asking him to pray, I really wanted him to just come over and just see the space and maybe just even talk to Michelle and Dave um, just so that he could, they could just pray even better for us. I wanted to share the story in person instead of over a phone call later. And when I did that, his wife said, oh my goodness, I'm five minutes away. I'm coming to pick up contacts two doors down from my son. So she was headed that way too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I just asked them to, when they got to, I said, can you meet us over at Cards and Pockets? So Michelle, Dave, and Maddie and I walked over there. And in talking to them, he shared that he met Jose three months ago. And when he met Jose, it was because Jose was extending himself and just being awesome because his son was invited to prom two days before and he called after closed hours and Jose went down and basically like opened up the business for him right. so that his son could do this, right. this kind of kind thing for somebody who was out of date two days before. And he was wearing a Liberty University shirt and his daughter is a D1 runner. So she got offers from amazing colleges, not that Liberty isn't, but you know, some people would want to go to an Ivy League school over a Christian school. And she decided, because of her newfound faith, this is that Jose's daughter, Jose's daughter right. that she wanted to go to Liberty University. And three out of four of the, this family's children have gone to Liberty University. They actually own a house down there because it was more fiscally responsible for them to buy a house <laughs> than pay tuition on campus for these children. So they were able to share. And through that, their family began to pray for Jose. Right. And right. so all this time, they've been praying. So we go over to tell them the story, and they say, we've already been praying for Jose, and these are the conversations that we've had. Oh. And it was, I need to tell you, it, it moved me to tears because I just, these aren't coincidences, guys, you know? <laughs> like, I just, it was really, and there's much more to it, but that's the shortest version, and I'd love to share more with anybody. But, and I know there's been about 15 to 20 little things like that this week yeah. that, that have made me, I'm usually, the, you know, some people in this church have dubbed me the old church lady because I tend to be a naysayer and a little bit more um, realistic with things. And I have oh, to say... Oh, me? <laughs> no. I have no. to say that um, I've been praying a lot this week and I'm so grateful when God shows you. He, you know, I just, I'm so grateful okay. for that. That doesn't always happen. No. Um, we don't get emails, but... Sometimes he just shows you things, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I also feel like if through this process, the only thing that happens that maybe Jose is saved through this process, then I'm just so grateful for that. Yeah, yeah, amen. So Sarah, she wanted to so add to it. Like no. That's the word, impatient, but I got excited and I was like, I don't know if we're closing, but I have to raise my hand like immediately. <laughs> so that's what was happening. Get excited, um, it's fine. Yes. <laughs> so, this is, I think this is going to be another confirmation because me and John weren't able to do a Zoom 
uh, call, unfortunately. We had something going on yesterday. We couldn't go with packing. So Mrs. Mendes, this is, this is a god send right now because the fact that this would happen. Mrs. Mendes just knew we were going to be leaving. This has to do with the situation. Yeah. And her plans got changed today. And I've known Mrs. Mendes ever since I was a little girl. Her and her husband, Pastor Joe Mendes, he passed away, um, was it two years ago? A year and a half ago. But they were very involved in downtown New Bedford, a big, you know, that city. And Mrs. Mendes, she's going to give a little bit of her story, but she said she's been praying for something to happen in Taunton. So here, here wow. she is. And yes, so she came here just to, to say goodbye to us, but it's not a coincidence that she's here right now. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, when I was a little girl, my father was not a pastor, but he was a preacher and a teacher mm. and helped the pastors a lot. Yeah. And a man in our church want, moved, wanted to start a church in Taunton. We were living in New Bedford. Yeah. And we would travel, my father and all uh, the family would travel with him and come to Taunton and minister every week. And then my father moved us to Taunton for, an hour, for a year and a half to help this man with this church in the downtown area of Taunton. Okay. And um, I now live in Attleboro, and when I go down to New Bedford, I purposely drive down mm. 140 <laughs> and pray for the downtown of taught him that God would raise up a church and a people that would mm. be community minded and reach the people. Really? And wow. I know that God works all together, right. all things together for good. I'm going to give you a very short testimony. My husband and I were in New Bedford. Can you bring the mic up just a little? And we needed a church building. We were renting. And when you rent, you know, you fall prey to the whims of your renter, of your, um, you know, of the person who's renting right. to you. We kept, we lost our building. So my husband said, we will meet at home and wait till God shows us what we're going to do. And we met yeah. in our home mm. for several years. And then a, a um, storefront opened up and we were in that storefront praying for God's leading. My husband was in the plans of wanting to buy that storefront and to develop it up into a church wow. building. However, sometimes divisions that we think are divisions may not be divisions. It may just be God stirring our nest into doing that which he wants us to do and lead us. Hmm. Um, for certain reasons, I did not feel very comfortable with that. First of all, there was no parking, um, and there was just a lot of other things. It would need a tremendous amount of work. Yeah. Um, I, God put something in my heart, and he put a church building that was already established as a church house, fully prepared and more into the center of the city. And so I just started praying. And there was a very bad, bad mold problem with that other building that was actually making me sick. <laughs> mm. and, but my husband, I didn't want to throw water on his fire. He was just so excited about it. <laughs> so I kept it to myself and I just prayed to God about it. So this was my fleece that I always throw out to God. Mm. I said, God, if it's your will, what you've put in my heart, that you have a building for us that is otherwise um, furnished and, and prepared, and this is not the building, then I pray that, be, that it will not be anything that we have done, mm. but something that is totally out of our hands, that you will mm. close this building. Mm. That you will close this building, mm. and that you will lead us to the place that you are preparing for us. Mm. We were on the road in Florida, and we get a phone call from the owner. I'm sorry, but the city came in and padlocked the building. Get out. And you can't meet in it until I'm like, holy oh, moly. Wow. <laughs> I just said, oh God, you're doing that. Yeah. Yep. So right. God moved us to a um, facility that was a um, building of, you know, the, the elderly building sort of. But mm -hmm. they allowed us to use their facility for free. And it was great because they were able to come down and be in the services. Mm -hmm. But across the street was a church building. <laughs> that mm -hmm. when we came to church, we would see it there. And there was hardly nobody in the parking lot at the time. 
So God started moving us closer to where he wanted us. We would come, we would come to the facility and sometimes they'd have the door closed and they have set up for a party. And we're like, oh. So we'd walk across the street and say, let's just join them. And we'd have <laughs> services with them. Lo and behold, God led us to there. One day, my husband knocked on their door and said, maybe we can rent from you guys. And the pastor says, rent? I've been on my knees praying and fasting for two weeks that God would send someone mm. here that would take over because I'm about to leave. Mm. Lo and behold, God had put these five things in my heart. A building that was paid and already awesome. paid because we had a very small congregation. A building that was totally equipped. A building that was close enough to minister to the to the downtown area. That. that building was free given to us. It was fully equipped. It was in the place that we could have it and everything was provided. Trust Amen. God. Don't lean onto the ledgers of your bank account. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the what? To the power that is within us. The power of his word to believe him in faith. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Oh man, God put you in this room this morning on purpose. I appreciate you sharing. Michelle I, and I refer to this as the laundry list that laundry she's list. been praying for for these years. God, could it have like tall ceilings? We could have some exposed brick. Silly little things about like details. No, they're not silly. That, that, like, exposed matter. brick is not silly. Everything, yes. The important things to the not important things, however you'd like to parse them. All the list. And so when this comes, it's, she's just been all week feeling like, oh, wait, there's this part of it and there's this part of it. I'm going to say something to, back to you as well in regards to uh, a story that I heard from Pastor Eduardo. And like we're in the very unique situation that we share this building. And when we asked Good Shepherd to come into this church to help us 11 years ago, there were two options. Would you rent from us? Or if we can't afford to exist anymore because we were in a very tough financial spot, which God takes care of when he wants to, um, or would you buy the building and we could stay here and rent from you. So from the very beginning, there's been this thought, but then God kind of like established us and brought in families and for a whole last decade has been very secure. It hasn't been a question. I was mentioning to him what God might be doing here and he's basically saying like, we still have the same heart. We love this place. We're rooted here. This is our home. And he said, I also have to tell you a story. And this is the praying forward for years in advance story as it might relate to Good Shepherd. If God does with this property or another move us into another place, Eduardo has a young son who adopted, no, he adopted a son, very young, grew up with the family, and then was estranged from the family for many years. And then a couple of months ago, recently, that son, Marcus, walked in through the door one Sunday morning to their service and sat down. And if you know the Good Shepherd uh, Episcopal tradition, their scriptures are all picked in advance all year long. So this was not Eduardo picking a scripture. The passage that day was on the prodigal son. And so he said, I couldn't even preach. I was just a mess. Everybody knows my son. They know our story. And he just walked in. I'm supposed to preach on the prodigal son. Like, what do I do? So like, they were just blown away by that moment. And there's been reconciliation. The son has continued to come back into the family. It's just a wonderful God story. So it's not my story. It's not our story. It's their story. But in the time that he's come back, he's come back to this place. Whereas when he and his family, they were in another, they were in Brockton. And he said, Dad, it's really interesting that you'd be here. Because when he was in high school, he went to the Southeastern Regional Votech School right up the street. So he'd go on his bus by this place. And he said, every time I drove by that little white church, I said, God, it would be really nice if my dad could have that church. Oh, I can't. I can't. It made me cry last night. Oh, I'm the story. His son prayed that prayer for his dad for here. Whatever. And what? Like what? They weren't here at that time. He wasn't praying because they were renters. They were in Brockton. They were in Brockton but he drove by here and was praying for his dad that he would have this place because he thought it would be perfect for his dad. And Eduardo said to me, you know what? Actually, just the other day I was talking to my wife about the building and the words she used was, this building is perfect for us. So he's got, this story might not even be about us. It might be it's about Jose. It might be about Taunt. It might be about Good Shepherd. It might be about it. people that don't and even go cool. to church. And like, I don't know, but stuff like that is happening all week long. When we started this week, honestly, no like disrespect to everyone here, but we expected to get like a lot of no's and a lot of like, this is not the time because you would have absolutely been right. It's not about like good timing. It doesn't. And so we were very much open to be like, here's an opportunity, but we just don't know. But then it's, it's had this weird sort of like thing 
that's just happening to us now. People calling us and saying other things and stories. So it's been that kind of week. It's like a super emotional week because we don't know, like, is God going to bring it to completion? Is it for us to consider? It, like, it's yes. certainly God's doing something and we're in the middle of it and we're going to find out what it's for and what it means. But it's a lot of beautiful stories and yours ties in with the laundry list, ties in with what Eduardo just said to me yesterday. It's like... overwhelming and beautiful and scary and exciting and like I don't know what to think or what to feel but maybe we crack open our Bibles now because we could probably talk a lot longer are there hands that I'm gonna be like ignoring if we do just dive into the word and just think about what it means to be sent ones I'd like to root this conversation in that John uh, like with, our, with our situation it's like oh yeah yeah, yeah. take the mic God, God provided every detail for our situation before he provided the thing that everything hinged on. Right. So like he put everything in place. Everything right. that we needed, everything that we wanted, and put all that in place first. And then gave us the one thing that said, hey, th now it can actually happen. So up until that, and I mean even till now, until this closing, it's like that is the hinging thing that everything goes on. And if, you feel, if that's the way that God's having you go, then you really don't have to be concerned on anything that's provided for it. So. Amen.